Hi everyone, welcome back for another video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about a product that's been on the market for a couple of years already. However, I still get quite a few questions despite it being a really simple product. That is the Powerbox Single Axis iGyro 1E. So let's get straight into it. Disclaimer alert, gyro good, gyro bad. A gyro doesn't fly the plane for you. It just helps it fly a little bit smoother and a little bit nicer. It prevents the plane being affected by external influences, i.e. wind, thermals, etc. So if you have a plane and you fly it at 7 a.m. on a perfectly calm morning, the plane flies really smooth on its own. Turn the gyro on and the plane will fly Exactly the same. Exactly. The gyro doesn't have to work because there are no external influences. Fly that same plane at midday though with wind and it's going to fly all over the place. Fly it with the gyro activated and it's just going to fly closer to how it did at 7am. That's it. It doesn't help you through any manoeuvres. You still have to hold rudder for knife edge. You still have to push when flying inverted. So. With that cleared up, let's get on with the video. The iGyro 1E may be very, very small, which makes it very easy to install. However, it punches way above its size. It contains all the same technology, gyro sensor and algorithms that the larger three axis gyros contain. However, being a single channel does make it a lot easier to program because there's only a third of the stuff that you need to do to it. At the same time, it actually offers you the chance to use it as a Y lead. So you can actually pull out two servos, both with gyro on them, different settings of gyro even, out of a single channel. It can, however, only be used on one channel. So you can't use two different channels for those two servo outputs. Setup is going to be done either via computer and the USB adapter or using the Bluecom and your mobile device, which is what we're going to be using in this video. Let's have a look at the actual iGyro itself. We have a total of four connections, two of which are marked as outputs, output one and output two. Those are where our servos are going to go. Now we can use this on a single servo or we can have, as we mentioned, two servos which are basically on a Y lead. However, we can have different gain settings for each one of them. We then have our input channel, which is the channel which is going to control those servos. So that would be either the elevator channel, the rudder channel, or the aileron channel. And then if we turn it over, we have the information for the final one, which is gain and USB. So the gain wire is the one that's going to tell us how much gain we have on those two servos. And we're also going to use that same wire to actually set it up. So we can use that for both the USB wire or for the Bluecom. As this is a single channel axis gyro, we need to know which way the gyro is actually orientated as well. And that is this way. So at the moment, if I had that installed in my plane like that, as it's that way that it's working, that would be for the rudder channel. If I have it like that, it would be for my ailerons. And if I had it like that, it would be for my elevator. So I need to bear that in mind when installing it in your model that you have to install it in the right orientation. Here we have a standard setup. An iGyro 1E connected to one or two servos, signal for those servos coming from the receiver as normal, and then a second lead for the gain which controls how much gyro gain those servos are receiving all powered by our usual flight pack. Now the gain channel, we're going to have it set to a slider. So if that's at zero in the center, we have no gain. As soon as we start increasing that, we start gaining a little bit of gain on those servos. The more we give, the more gyro reacts. If we move in one direction, we have normal gain. So the gyro moves and bounces back. 
If we go the other way of zero, we have heading hold, in which it will move and stay there until the gyro bounces back. So normally, you're always going to start a flight at zero. You're going to increase that in the normal gain. And once you've been with it, you can then try the same in the opposite direction with heading. Depending on which one you feel happier with, you're then going to leave it there. That's then going to be your standard gain for all of your flights. At this point, you can actually swap the slider for a two or three position switch in which one position would be zero, so gyro off, and then the other position would be whatever percentage your slider was left at. That will be your normal flying gain. If you're short on channels, you can actually disconnect the gain lead and recover that receiver channel for something else. Just be aware that if you do that, you will lose the possibility to increase, decrease, or even turn on or off the gyro. It's always going to be on at the last gain setting that it received. All of this works like this directly out of the box. The only setup that we've done is using this slider. The servo itself can also be set up directly from the radio as normal, using subtrim, endpoint, etc. If, however, the gyro movement needs to be reversed, or you wish to use the micro match servo functions that are inside the iGyro 1A, you will need to use either a Bluecom adapter or PC interface. In order to do so, all we need to do is connect it to the USB gain lead, the one that we actually removed earlier, and turn on our mobile device. From the Powerbox app, we're going to go into iGyro, and locate the iGyro 1E. From here, we can now reverse the gyro output either for output 1 or output 2, as required. We also have some extra functions, such as adjusting the servo frame rate, which normally, unless you're using very special servos, you'll never need to change, just leave it at 15. We have sense times 4, which basically gives you 400% gyro gain, which normally is never ever required. It's just a nice option if, for any reason, you have particularly slow servos on short servo arms and you're already using 100% of normal gain, then you can try that just to increase it a bit further. But normally, not required. And then, of course, we have servo matching for output 2. What that means is you would set up output 1 from the radio using center and endpoints as normal, and then output number 2 you would then be able to adjust the second servo independently. So adjusting the endpoint as required. I'm not going to go into too much detail here as I do have another video for this, which I'll link up here, which is for the Powerbox micro match. If we go on to page two, we have some extra options here. Now, if we're only using one servo, this is never really going to be needed because all of our game is gonna be controlled directly from the radio. If, however, we are using two servos, then this allows us to have different gain settings on both of them. All we're gonna do is decrease what would be the maximum gain for that particular output. Basically, so if we have our radio set to 100, as it's set now, output A, the maximum would only be 55% gyro, whereas output B, would still be 100. On the bottom half, we have what's currently set to heading hold, where we can do the same. We can limit what would the maximum be, one way or the other, thus allowing to have different gain settings on those two different outputs. You can also remove the ticks if you want. If heading hold is something that concerns you, you can actually remove them entirely. Or if you always want to use heading hold, you can activate them on both directions. So we can just play with this however we want until we have the settings just like we want them, thus limiting the gain on one or both of those two servos. And there you have it, the Powerbox iGyro 1E set and programmed for whichever model you need, be it on rudder because you have a bit of a tailfish, 
on the ailerons because it waggles a lot, or even on the steering because it just tends to go a little bit everywhere on takeoff or landing. I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful. For more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave us a like, and any questions or queries, leave them in the comments below and I'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm Martin Pickering and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to come back every Tuesday for a new episode of Cool Tech Tips and Tutorials and on Sundays for flying videos and event coverage. Or hit that subscribe button and the bell that's next to it in order to receive a reminder when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.